plant tissues in this video we will learn about plant tissues plant tissues are mainly divided into two groups the first one is meristematic tissues and the second one is permanent tissues meristematic tissues are of three types apical meristem lateral meristem and intercalary meristem permanent tissues are of two types simple permanent tissues which consists of parenchyma cholenchyma and sclerenchyma complex permanent tissues consists of xylem and phloem now let us know about the location structure and functions of each of these tissues let us begin with meristematic tissues we know that plants and animals grow but the pattern of growth is different in plants and in animals in animals entire body grows uniformly cells throughout the body divide and grow allowing all parts to increase in size at the same rate this means our arms legs and torso all grow together as we get taller and larger whereas plants grow in specific regions called meristems meristems are like growth zones located at the tips of roots and shoot these regions have cells called meristematic cells these cells divide rapidly and are responsible for the plant's growth because of this the plant mainly grows at the tips of its roots and shoots making them longer this special tissue is called meristematic tissue do you know the different types of meristematic tissue in plants the meristematic tissue of plants is classified into three types depending upon its location they are one apical meristem two lateral meristem and three intercalary meristem apical meristem this meristematic tissue is found at the tips of stems and roots the apical meristem helps stems and roots grow longer second one lateral meristem this meristematic tissue is found in the cork cambium and vascular cambium of plants the cells in the lateral meristem divide and add new cells inside and outside this increases the plant's girth means thickness or width making the stem and roots thicker and stronger now the third one intercalary meristem this meristem is mostly found in the monocot plants like grass intercalary meristems are located at specific points primarily at the base of leaves and at the nodes where leaves attach to the stem intercalary meristems enable plants to grow in length now let us see the characteristics of meristematic tissue the cells in meristematic tissue divide frequently to produce new cells meristematic cells are small and tightly packed with no intercellular spaces these cells have thin primary cell walls do you know why if you know the answer write it in the comments meristematic cells have a large prominent nucleus to support frequent cell division generally mature plant cells have large vacuoles for storing nutrients and providing support but meristematic cells do not have larger vacuoles because they need the extra space for fast cell division meristematic cells have a dense cytoplasm that supports active cell division these cells are undifferentiated meaning they haven't specialized into specific cell types yet now let us learn about permanent tissues in plants do you know how the permanent tissues are formed in plants we learnt about meristematic tissues meristematic cells have the ability to divide continuously these cells are undifferentiated means they can become any type of cells needed by the plant when meristematic cells stop dividing they begin the process of differentiation during this process the cells take on specific shapes and functions and finally form the permanent tissues these permanent tissues then take on specific jobs in the plant such as giving structural support or nutrient transport 
or storage depending on their type. So, permanent tissues are formed by the differentiation of meristematic tissue. Do you know what differentiation is? The process in which unspecialized cells becomes specialized cells. We can compare the unspecialized cells as the students of medical college or university. After they graduate, they may take up a specialization and becomes a specialist. In the same way, the young and immature unspecialized cells like meristematic cells get differentiated into permanent tissue with specific functions. So, the process of young and immature unspecialized cells taking up of a specific shape, size and a specific function is called differentiation. Now, let us see the simple permanent tissue. Simple permanent tissue is of three types. Parenchyma, Cholenchyma and Sclerenchyma. First, let us learn about Parenchyma. Characteristics of Parenchyma Tissue Parenchyma tissue is one of the most common types of simple permanent tissues in plants. Most of the parenchyma cells are roughly spherical in shape. They can also be in oval or elongated shapes. The cell walls are thin and flexible and are made up of cellulose. Parenchyma cells often have large intercellular spaces. These spaces helps for gas exchange. These cells contain large central vacuoles which store nutrients, water and waste products. Parenchyma cells or living cells Do you know the functions of parenchyma? In leaves, certain parenchyma cells have chloroplasts that carry out photosynthesis. These specialized cells are called chlorenchyma. In simple terms, parenchyma with chloroplast is called chlorenchyma. Parenchyma cells also play a key role in storing food for the plant. They accumulate various nutrients such as sugars, starches and oils, which the plant can use for energy and growth. This storage function is especially important in parts like roots, stems and seeds where the stored food helps support the plant during periods of growth or dormancy. Parenchyma helps some plants float on water, especially in aquatic species. In these plants, the parenchyma cells have large air cavities. This specialized type of parenchyma is known as aerenchyma. Aerenchyma helps aquatic plants stay afloat by making them less heavy. Its air-filled spaces keep the plants buoyant so that they can float and stay on the water's surface. Next, we see the another type of simple permanent tissue called cholenchyma. Characteristics of cholenchyma The cells of cholenchyma are living cells. They are elongated cells with irregular thickenings at the corners. The intercellular spaces between the cells of cholenchyma are very less. Now, let us see the functions of cholenchyma. Cholenchyma provides structural support to growing parts of the plant, such as stems and leaves. Its thickened cell walls offer strength while allowing flexibility. The cells of cholenchyma are flexible and can bend without breaking. This flexibility helps the plant to withstand wind and other physical forces without damage. Next, we see the third type of simple permanent tissue, sclerenchyma. Characteristics of sclerenchyma The cells of sclerenchyma are long, narrow and dead. The cell walls are thickened due to the presence of a compound called lignin. Due to thick cell wall, there is very less space or no space inside the cells. This tissue is located around the vascular bundles in the stems and in the veins of leaves. It is also located in the covering of seeds and nuts. The covering on the coconut, that is the coconut husk, is made up of sclerenchymatous tissues. Let us see the functions of sclerenchyma. 
Sclerenchyma cells have thick, lignified walls that provide rigid structural support to the plant, helping it maintain its shape and withstand various stresses like heavy winds. Sclerenchyma cells are extremely strong and contribute to the plant's overall strength and rigidity, particularly in mature parts such as stems and bark. This is about the simple permanent tissue in plants. Now, let us learn about epidermis. Just like how our bodies are protected by skin, plant bodies are protected by a layer of epidermis. So, epidermis is the outer protective covering of a plant. How does this epidermis looks like? In most cases, the epidermis is single-layered. It's mostly flat and forms a continuous layer without any intercellular spaces. Do all plants have the same type of epidermis? No, not all plants have the same type of epidermis. Plants that need extra protection, such as those in extreme dry habitats like cacti, have a different kind of epidermis. These plants have a thicker epidermis with multiple layers, which helps prevent water loss. Which parts of the plant are covered by epidermis? All parts of the plant are covered by epidermis. But there is a difference between epidermis covering the shoot system and the one which is covering the root system. What are the special features of epidermis present on the aerial parts of the plant, that is, the shoot system of the plant? The epidermal cells of the aerial parts of the plant secrete a waxy, water-resistant layer on their outer surface. This waxy layer is called cuticle. It protects the plant parts from excess loss of water, mechanical injury and from parasitic fungi. Epidermis present on the leaf has small pores here and there. These pores are called stomata. And each stomata is protected by a pair of kidney-shaped guard cells. Do you know the function of this stomata? Stomata has two functions. One, stomata are essential for exchange of gases. Two, they help in the process of transpiration. How about the epidermal cells of root system look like? The epidermal cells of roots have long hair-like structures called root hairs. These root hairs greatly increase the total absorptive surface area, allowing the roots to absorb more water and nutrients from the soil. In big trees, epidermis on the stem surface is replaced with dead cork cells. These cells have a chemical called suberin, which prevents the entry of gases into the stem. This is all about epidermis in plants. Now, let us learn about complex permanent tissues in plants. Do you know what is the difference between simple permanent tissue and complex permanent tissue of plants? Let's see. Here are two flower bouquets. Can you spot the difference between them? Yes, bouquet A is made up of same type of flowers and bouquet B is made up of different types of flowers. In the same way, simple permanent tissue is made up of similar kind of cells, whereas the complex permanent tissue is made up of more than one type of cells. Even though there are different types of cells exist in one tissue, they all work together for a common function. The complex permanent tissues in plants are of two types, xylem and phloem. What are the features and functions of xylem tissue? Xylem is composed of different types of cells like vessels, tracheids, fibers and parenchyma cells. Tracheids they are smaller tapper tubes. They help in the conduction of water and minerals. Vessels. They are large hollow tubes that aids for efficient water transport. They conduct water and minerals from the roots to other parts of the plant. In xylem tissue, the vessels and tracheids are the dead cells. These cells are dead at maturity and have thick 
lignified walls that form hollow tubes. Next, fibers. They provide additional mechanical support and strength to the plant. They have thick lignified walls that help the plant to stay upright. Parenchyma cells. They store nutrients and assist in the repair and maintenance of xylem tissue. These are the different cells of xylem tissue. Now let's see the features and functions of phloem tissue. Phloem is made up of five types of cells. They are sieve cells, sieve tubes, companion cells, phloem fibers and phloem parenchyma. Sieve cells. They are similar to sieve tubes but found mainly in gymnosperms and some angiosperms. They have smaller pores and serve a similar function in nutrient transport. Sieve tubes. They conduct the transport of sugars and other nutrients throughout the plant. They are elongated cells with perforated end walls called sieve plates that allow the flow of phloem sap. Companion cells. They assist sieve tubes by providing them with essential metabolic support. They are connected to sieve tubes via plasmodesmata and help in loading and unloading nutrients. Phloem fibers. They provide structural support and strength to the phloem tissue. They have thick lignified walls and help reinforce the plant's structure. Phloem parenchyma. They store nutrients and aid in the repair and maintenance of phloem tissue. They also assist in the lateral movement of nutrients within the phloem. This is all about the tissues in plants. Thanks for watching. Please like the video. Please share this video with your friends. Please subscribe to Great Booster channel. Press the bell icon to get all the latest updates. Check the description to find links of other useful videos.